This is the 21st Sunday in the season of Pentecost. The Lord we follow, the Christ we carry within our souls, the living spirit which guides us is not stifled by fear or discouragement. The gospel gives us the courage to thrive. Hear God's word from the gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter, the first 10 verses. The story is of Jesus meeting with a tax collector. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was looking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree to see him, but he was because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Some thoughts on courageous living. We don't live in a country where there is widespread persecution or suppression of the church. Nevertheless, we all live within our own skins with our personal self-imposed filters, or at least most of us do most of the time. We've been taught to be polite, considerate, and kind, lest we offend others with what we say or do. As a result, We may just stifle or restrain or even suppress our own truth, the sharing of the Christian message. For this reason, we do well to remember Zacchaeus, the short, inquisitive tax collector who climbed a tree to see Jesus. In doing that, Jesus saw him and their worlds changed. Those outside the church today also want to see and know Christ. I think some are inquisitive, as was our friend Zacchaeus. As to the hands and feet and spirit of Christ here, how can we courageously share our truth with the curious and inquisitive? As disciples, Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations called as was Zacchaeus, to go out on a limb so others can see and learn of Christ. Living courageously is putting ourselves and what we believe on the line for the benefit of others and even ourselves, strengthening our faith as we share it. This is the model we have from the gospel records of the way our Lord lived. Living courageously, he did not hold back or filter his truth when he knew it might disturb or offend others, because his truth was good news. The goal of his three years of ministry was not to win a popularity contest. His goal was to save the lost. His courageous living resulted in his death. Jesus lived courageously when he was criticized for spending time with the lost, Tax collectors, the poor, adulterers, the mentally ill, the sick, the blind, prostitutes. He spoke out clearly and strongly that he came to those who were in need of healing, and that included those who belittled him and those who rejected others. Jesus chose to spend much of his time with social outcasts and with those looked down upon. Today, the subject who received the love of God through Christ was a man who was looked down upon, literally and figuratively. The short in stature chief tax collector, Zacchaeus. We need to know that tax collectors were despised during the time Jesus lived. 
They were, after all, seen as turncoats or traitors, Jews who worked for the occupying country, Rome. Their task, task obviously, was to collect money for Rome. And for their tax collections, they received a handsome percentage. They lived prosperously off the backs of their fellow Jews. Zacchaeus was not just a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector and very, very rich. So when those in Jericho saw Jesus not only speaking with Zacchaeus, but inviting himself to Zacchaeus' house, the rumors began to fly and judgments against Jesus again were proclaimed. As I said, we are familiar with Jesus siding with marginalized people, especially the poor. But in Luke's story, we seem to see Jesus change course completely in full sight of the community. He sidles up to a rich Zacchaeus and asks to be taken to his home as a guest. At this point, we can reflect on Jesus' reputation and, like the crowd nearby, we can wonder about Jesus' seeming hypocrisy in now wanting to spend time with this rich man. Then we realize what Jesus saw in Zacchaeus. Yes, he was rich, yet Jesus saw Zacchaeus was very much a marginalized, despised man who everyone in the town of Jericho loved to hate. So Jesus was, in fact, being himself. As he said, he had come to save the lost, and despite his wealth, Zacchaeus was one of the lost. We already established that Christ lived his life courageously for the sake of others and not himself in selfless living. Well, how about Zacchaeus? Luke's story indicated that after seeing Jesus, Zacchaeus was willing to make significant changes in his life and also make amends to anyone he had defrauded. So it appears to me that measured by the yardstick of Christ's courageous living, our friend Zacchaeus was beginning the process of turning the corner toward the destination called courageous living. How about us? How in our lives have we chosen to change our lives courageously for the sake of others? When have we said yes to the tug and the pull of Christ's Spirit within us to set aside our own agendas for the sake of someone else's need? You might consider it presumptuous or even egotistical or prideful to think about or share times in your life when you lived courageously. But I would say, on the contrary, we need to be thinking of and sharing those times. Why? So we can grow from them and replicate them more and more. And, and, so others with whom we share may have more models to use themselves to inspire them. And the church will be enriched. The models we share are the illumination of Christ to our world. Our models illustrate this is what Christ means to me for those climbing trees to see Jesus. Zacchaeus, a short man, took the risk of climbing a tree to see Jesus. Wasn't that courageous? I think it was. He literally went out on a limb for Christ. It wasn't just the physical risk that he took to get a glimpse of and see who Jesus was. It was his courage to do that and put himself in the light in trying to see Jesus, he courageously exposed himself, for he knew he was despised within his community. When have we acted courageously to learn something we knew we needed to know? Think about parents who sacrifice financially to set aside funds for years and years, all for the sake of their children's higher education. That is courageous living. Or consider, consider parents who risk their lives and those of their children, traveling great distances for the hope of a new life based only upon the prayer of finding Christ's hop hospitality at their destination. All courageous events, acts of faith and love for the sake of others. My parents did that 
when we traveled from a small town so that my siblings and I could receive better educational opportunities in another city. And we were welcomed into that warm hospitality of another Presbyterian church when we arrived. Still courageous living. There will be two families leaving their homes soon to visit this area and see as Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus. They will come to see if Christ's Spirit is leading them to this community to become your new pastor. That takes courage. For some it takes great, great courage to get up out of bed and face a new day. How many profiles of courage are in your history? Courageous acts taken for others or on your own behalf. Like Zacchaeus, sometimes we too need to, to go out on a limb to see Christ. Yet, unlike Zacchaeus, we have the benefit of having seen Christ. When Jesus came from the waters of baptism, by John the Baptizer. And when he was transfigured on the mountain and again identified as God's beloved, unlike Zacchaeus, who took a great risk to see the Lord, we have the four Gospels given to us to see Christ every day. And we hope to hear the same words Zacchaeus heard from Jesus after Zacchaeus announced how he would change his life for the sake of others. What we pray to hear is what Zacchaeus heard. Today, salvation has come to this house. And the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. To the glory of God. Amen.